I know you missed me. We're back with some more college algebra. So for this first one, all we're doing is writing the expression in the lowest terms, which means we're simplifying. 13 is a prime number, so it does not simplify, but the k squared and the k does. So we're just left with 13k over 22. Man, if they could all be that simple, that would be great. Right over here, this one is already factored for us. So all you're doing is you're looking for any of those factors that can simplify to one. So this x minus two and this x minus two do. So you're left with a negative five on top and an x plus three on the bottom. All right, so for this next one, neither the top nor the bottom are factored. So we're gonna have to factor both. So three times negative four is a negative 12. So I'm looking for the factors. So I'm gonna do a positive six and a negative two. You know me, I love my box. So we do 3m squared minus 4. Then we do a 6m and a negative 2m. Both of these are divisible by a 3m. This would be a negative 2. This is an m. And then this is a 2. So on the top, our factors are m plus 2 and 3m minus 2. Then we're going to simplify the bottom. All right. 3 times 4 is a 12. So 2 and 6 are going to be our factors. So we're going to do another box. 3m squared and 4. Then we have a 2m and a 6m. These are both divisible by 3m. 2m and 2. So on the bottom we have 3m plus 2. 3m plus 2. Alright, so when you're looking through to see what can factor. So this one, sorry, don't know where I came up with that 3 from. It's just the m plus 2 and a 3m plus 2. So when you're looking for factors that cancel, this m plus 2 and this m plus 2 can simplify to 1. So you are left with a 3m minus 2 on top and a 3m plus 2 on the bottom. All right, I've officially run out of space, so I'm going to use a separate sheet of paper to help me out with number 22. Okay, so for number 22, the top is a sum of cubes, which our formula is a plus, and then a minus, and then a plus. So the cube root of x cubed is x, the cube root of 125 is 5, then you square it, so it becomes x squared, you square it, so it becomes 25, and then you multiply them together and get 5x. That is your top. Then on the bottom, you have the x plus 5. All right, looking for factors that they have in common, this x plus 5 on top, this x plus 5 on bottom. So your final answer it's just the x squared minus 5x plus 25. Okay, let's look at number 23. Right, we have an m cubed minus 8 over m minus 2. This one is a difference of cubes, so we have the formula minus plus plus, so the cubed root of m cubed is m, cubed root of 8 is 2, then we square it, so this becomes m squared, this becomes 4, this becomes a 2m. On the bottom, we still have that m minus 2, so you cancel out any of your common factors, simplify to 1, so you are left with m squared plus 2m plus 4, and that is your final answer. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to that next section because we've only been recording for four minutes so far. So we're going to look at question number 24. For these, you're writing the expression with only positive exponents and evaluate if possible. Assume all variables represent non-zero real numbers. So we have x over 8. And that bar means divide, so you're going to multiply by the reciprocal, x over 7 over 3. All right, you have nothing that can simplify, so you are just left with 
x times x plus 7 over 8 times 3, which is 24. Okay, looking at that next one, 25, flipping it on over, right? I'll get there, I promise. All right, number 25, you have 6 over y times, you're going to flip it so it becomes y plus 7 on top over 8. You're going to simplify where you can, so 6 and 8 are both divisible by 2. So this becomes a 3 and a 4. So on top, you have 3 times y plus 7. On the bottom, you have a 4y. All right, you just thought it was going to be easy, right? We're going to step it up a little bit more with question number 26. This time, we have a binomial, so we've got to get a common denominator first. So to get a common denominator here, I'm going to multiply by s over s. To get as a common denominator, this gives me 9s over s plus 3 over s. These now have a common denominator, so it's just 9s plus 3 over s on the top. This is your top portion. And now we're going to deal with the bottom. So the bottom portion, I'm just going to multiply by 3 over 3. So this gives me 3s over 12 plus 1 over 12. So when you add these together, the denominator stays the same and you get 3s plus 1. This is your bottom. So now that it's time to divide, the stop top stays the same and I'm going to factor out this 3. So 3, this becomes 3s plus 1 over s. And then I'm going to flip this one right here to become a 12 over a 3s plus 1. Okay, once we have it here, we're going to simplify anywhere we can. So this 3s plus 1 and this 3s plus 1. So on top, 3 times 12 is 36 over s. And that is your final answer. Getting me a new piece of paper for number 27 because, you know, we just love all the work. <clears throat> so again, these do not have a common denominator, so we're going to have to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by x over x. So I get 8x over x times x minus h. Plus, for this term, I'm going to multiply by x minus h over x minus h. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute, and we get an 8x minus 8h over x times x minus h. This is the top. On the bottom, oh, so let's go ahead and combine. So now that we're adding these, 8x and 8x gives me 16x minus 8h over x times x minus h. So this is our top, which stays the same, and I'm going to go ahead and factor out an 8. So this becomes 2x minus h over x times x minus h. And then you're going to multiply it by this denominator flipped. Remember, this is this over 1, so it becomes 1 over 2x minus h when you flip it. So now you can see those factors that can cancel. This simplifies, and this simplifies to be 1, so on top you have 8 times 1, which is 8, and on the bottom you have x times x minus h, and that is your final answer. Alright, now let's look at number 28, what I know is going to be everybody's favorite. <clears throat> So when you're looking at the denominator of these, there's nothing that these are going to have in common if I was to multiply it out and factor it, whatever it may be, just because this has h's and this does not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply by what's missing, and I'm going to deal with this 1 over h here at the end. So for the top part, for the first fraction, I'm going to multiply by x squared plus 6 over x squared plus 6. So I get 1 over h, because that's on the outside, and I get an x squared plus 6 over x plus h squared plus 6. 
<sighs> times x squared plus 6. That's going to be our common denominator. Then we take a minus. This one, this fraction right here, is missing this whole x plus h squared plus 6. So I'm going to multiply that, both top and bottom. So we get a minus x plus h squared plus 6 over x plus h squared plus 6 times x squared plus 6. Sorry, I realize you couldn't see that. All right, so now I'm going to try to simplify this top part up here, now that I have a common denominator, hoping that we can, com can combine some like terms. So on top, I've got an x squared plus 6. When I FOIL this out, I get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and then plus 6, but I'm taking the negative, so I've got to distribute the negative to that. So it becomes a negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 6. All over, on the bottom, you're going to have this h now, that we didn't know about, right? That we excluded and waited until the end. Over the x plus h squared plus 6. Let me do a separate parentheses with that. Um, times x squared plus 6. So let's see what we can simplify. This x squared and this x squared are 0 pairs. This 6 and this minus 6 are 0 pairs. So all we're left with is this piece right here. So I am going to factor out a GCF. So I am going to factor out a negative H. This leaves me with a 2X um, plus H. And then all over H times X plus H squared plus 6 times X squared plus 6. This H and this H cancel, so your most simplified answer would be negative parentheses 2x plus H over x plus H squared plus 6 times x squared plus 6. That was a nasty answer that really didn't get a whole lot prettier, but that's what you get. Almost done, guys. We're moving right along, going back to some more simpler ones. Number 29. All right, so for number 29, first we're going to deal with the top piece. Put it over here. All right, so we're missing this x over x. So this gives me 9x over x plus 3 over x on the top. On the bottom, you're going to multiply by 3 over 3. So that gives me a 3x over 12 plus 1 over 12. So combining on the top, now that we have a common denominator, this is x on the bottom and 9x plus 3 on the top. Down here, we have a 3x plus 1 over 12. So we keep the top the same, but I'm going to factor out the GCF of a 3, so we get 3x plus 1 over x. And then I multiply by this flipped, which is 12 over 3x plus 1. This 3x plus 1 and this 3x plus 1 would simplify. 3 times 12 equals 36 over x, and that is your final answer, which I feel like we just did a problem like I checked, it was number 26. 26 was the exact same, but we used S's instead of X's. Oh well, whatever, you know, we've got plenty of time to keep practicing. All right, so last question that we're gonna deal with is question number 30. Should I make sure that it's not a repeat question? <laughs> Just kidding. All right, question number 30. On top, we have Y over six, and we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal, which is Y plus four over 5. Okay, nothing simplifies. So on top, you just have y times y plus 4. On the bottom, 6 times 5 is 30. And that is your most simplified answer.